UIM F1H20 World Championship returns to France for the first time since 2007 for the 19th French Grand Prix to be raced in Evian on Lac Le Mans. Located at the foothill of the mighty Alps, Evian is a place defined by water. A historic spa town renowned for its pristine and curative mineral springs, Evian Le Bain is today a popular resort destination that attracts people from all over the world. The original source of the world-renowned Evian mineral water still flows from the mountains into the town center. These waters feed fantastic luxury hotels and spas, incredible panoramic lake views surrounded by lush greenery, and some of the most picturesque golf courses in the world. A top destination during the Belle Epoque and the Roaring Twenties, Evian is also known for its beautiful architectural works, including the Buvette Caché, known as the Temple of Water, and La Grand Jolac Concert Hall, made completely of wood. And there's also the Casino d'Evian, the largest themed casino in Europe to spice things up at night. It's a natural destination for the fastest and most exciting motorsport on water. Evian hosts round two of the 2015 F1H2O World Championship as the greatest powerboat racers from around the world descend on Lake Geneva to battle it out for the Grand Prix of France. The event attracted extensive interest and coverage in France as tens of thousands gathered to watch their countrymen, 2014 world champion Philippe Chiap, compete in home waters. And they got a taste of the thrill of being in an F1H2O boat. There are 19 drivers from 10 teams competing in Evian. All eyes are on local hero, Frenchman Philippe Chiap of CTIC China team. This is his second time racing on home waters, but this time he's racing as defending world champion. The pressure is on. Yes, uh, of course it's a pressure for me, for my team. It's big pressure, but uh, we are good uh, feeling and uh, the water condition is very perfect. And we have a uh, good setup for make a uh, good result on qualifying. He had a good start to the new season in round one in Qatar, where he gave a spirited, race-long chase, but eventually had to settle for runner-up to Sean Torrente, who had pole position and led from start to finish through very rough conditions that ended under a yellow flag after a spectacular crash between Sami Celio from Mad Croc Baba and Ahmed Al Hamili of Emirates team. Torrente won his second Qatar Grand Prix in a row with young Swede Eric Stark finishing an impressive third. Sean Torrente beat Chiap in Qatar, but he was world runner-up to the Frenchman last year. Now Torrente wants the top prize, and he leads the world standings going into round two. He has a new team, the legendary Victory Outfit from Dubai, and a new boat, switching from the DAC to a Baba hull. Um, you know, the boat feels really good. We only This is the only hour we've had in it. Um, the guys did a great job getting it ready. We were able to run the whole time. and We have a few minor things to work out. I still haven't put what I consider a good lap down, but it's crazy fast, so that's good. If I can just improve and be as good as the boat, I think we're in good shape. Torrente's former teammate and three-time consecutive world champion, Alex Corella, continues racing for Team Abu Dhabi. He managed to... Oh. 
nabbed fifth place with an endurance boat in the Qatar Grand Prix in round one, but he'll be racing his new boat in Evian under the tutelage of Guido Capellini. Boat uh, looks uh, looks ready. We like this uh, race course, so uh, we have all the package for uh, do well today. There are yet more changes to lineups following the musical chairs that was seen in Qatar, and there are new teams and drivers in the mix. Joining Scott Gilman's Emirates team alongside Ahmed Al Hamali is one of the most talented and promising F1 H2O talents of recent years, Eric Stark, fresh off a podium in Qatar. Stark's former teammate Moritz Stromoy is now with Team EMIC, formerly Team Nautica. She's racing alongside French F1 H2O rookie Christophe Larigot, a two-time ruined 24-hour Class 3 S3000 winner. Another new team is Maverick Racing, featuring returning veteran Frenchman Cédric Deguin, who's back in F1H2O after a 10-year absence. Also back is Bartek Marsalek for Motorglass F1 Racing Team. Evian features a six-pin course with very long straights that are good for passing. The waters of Evian are unpredictable, with rogue waves making it especially tricky and high winds generated from the nearby Alps. It feels really good, but uh, you know the condition is very tricky out here. You know, some sometimes it's rolling in big rollers, but uh, sometimes it's completely flat. So every lap is different. So you need to be on your watch. When you do get some rollers from boats or something, they stay for a long time, and they're long, undulating. You know, they're basically the distance from the top to the top of the wave is longer than your boat. So it just it's like hitting the whoops in a motorcycle. You got to hit them right. If you don't hit them right, you're right. Qualifying is divided into three sessions. In Q1, the fastest 12 drivers advance to Q2, where the field is narrowed down to the last six, who then have two laps in the course of themselves in a shootout for pole position. Conditions were rough and windy on the day, with large swells. Looking from it is perfect, and but sometimes it's coming in heavy rollers, and it's difficult to see them. It's not the same this morning. Morning is perfect, and now, I don't know. Uh, the idea is, I think it's possible to drive, but uh, not the way. With Duarte Benevente of F1 Atlantic team and Bernd Enzenhofer of Motorglass F1 unable to compete in qualifying after a crash in practice, 17 boats went out for Q1. Unable to make the cut were Stromoy, De Guin, Zhang Ziwei, Bartek Marsalek, and David Delpin who took out a boy, causing serious damage to his boat. Bad luck for the Italian, his Grand Prix was over. The rough conditions continued to torment the remaining 12 boats in Q2. Eric Stark was unable to make the cut, as were Jesper Fors of Team Sweden, Philip Roms of Mad Croc Baba, and Christophe Larigot, out early with a breakdown. Ahmed Al Hamali was just outside the top six with one minute remaining. He pushed too hard and it was a huge, spectacular crash. He was unhurt, but that meant two boats completely wrecked in two Grand Prix for Emirates team. Everyone was trying, this is what happened. I mean, normal crash, I mean, if you don't try, you, you cannot be uh, winning. Or it took a long time to clean up the debris and weather conditions worsened. We finished the Q2 with uh, 20 minutes uh, as in the schedule, but uh, the water conditions are uh, a little bit rough. In the morning normally the water is much better, so we're going to make a new schedule and uh, I'm going to try to start the shootout at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. The six boats in Q3 unwrapped their engines in the morning. Oh. 
morning. It was down to Anderson, Schiap, Corella, Al Rubayan, Torrente, and Celio. In the Q3 showdown for pole position, Jonas Anderson of Team Sweden was first out, but the multiple pole position winner set a lackluster time. Defending world champion Philip Schiap was out next, and he ripped through that circuit finding the zone as he beat Anderson's time by nearly three seconds to take provisional pole. Alex Carrillo was up and he had a brilliant run setting a time of 47.84 but it wasn't enough to unseat Schiap. Fastest in Q1 and third fastest in Q2 Kuwaiti Yusuf Al Rubayan of F1 Atlantic team was next on the circuit. He continued his fine form in Q3, setting a time of 47.83, just one hundredth of a second faster than Corella, moving him into provisional second behind Schiap, with Sean Torrente the next man up. Torrente was fast, considering his new boat, but was still four tenths of a second slower than Schiap. Last man out, Sammy Celio. All eyes were on the two-time world champion from Finland as he went all out in his two laps. But it was a disappointing time for him as he had to make do with fifth position on the starting grid. The pole position winner at Evian, Philip Schiap, leading the field here in home waters. The best ever qualifying result for Al Rubayan in second, but he'll have a lot of good drivers breathing down his neck. Teams and drivers retreated to a fantastic, futuristic spectacle as Evian pulled out all the stops in a wonderful night of hospitality and partying. Second race of the year gets underway. Conditions are rough, the pressure is on. It's a very tricky condition all the time, and uh, I think it will not be any better in the race, so it will be a very challenging race to come to us. I'm ready, we'll find out after the race. The start today has got a wild card because Yusuf is up at number two, which is a great run for him. Um, other than that, it's the usual suspects. We kind of all know what each other does, except for Yusuf. So um, it could be a big disaster, or Yusuf could come out in the lead. You don't know. You know, it's uh, it's not easy. Behind me, Alex Carrella, Sami, Jonas Anderson, uh, Sean Trenti. This will be hard. It's not easy. But uh, at the same time, I'm not going to keep it. Uh, I'm not going to be lose the throttle up or, or I will slow down. We have a goal, we need to win this race. I don't know, we have big plans for sure. For sure we will enjoy the race together, if we will be a bit together. But for sure my plan is to pass him uh, in the first lap or try to, to catch Philippe even if I know that it will be really hard. But, uh, uh, we give our best, uh, we work like crazy for three months for this race. So. Now just push. They'll all be pushing to beat this man, and he has a whole town rooting for him. Starting grid, Shiap with the third pole position of his career, then Al Rubayan, followed by former teammates Carella and Torrente. Stark in seventh, Force eighth. Al Hamali and Cantando with a lot of work to do at the back. The final seconds, teams prepare for the drag race to the commitment boy. There they 
go. Thousands of horsepower unleashed. Shep off to a great start, roaring down that starting straightaway with Arubayan right beside him. Young Philip Roms drops back as Jesper Force speeds off to his left. Shiap first to the commitment boy. Corella is right beside Al Rubayan, putting the pressure on the Kuwaiti as they come around boy number six. And Corella passes Al Rubayan to move into second. Now Shiap leading down the straightaway with Corella right behind him in second. Al Rubayan's woes continue as Torrente comes up on the outside, passing the Kuwaiti on that long straightaway to boy number two. Al Rubayan bumped down to fourth. Not a good start for the F1 Atlantic driver. Anderson, meanwhile, overhauls Sami Celio to move into fifth position. The Swede setting his sights on Al Rubayan. But the star of the moment is Shiap, setting the pace here in his more boat in front of tens of thousands of French spectators cheering on the CTIC China driver. At the back of the field, multiple Grand Prix winner Francesco Cantando moves up on Duarte Benevente, trying to pass the Portuguese driver to move up the field. The positions, Schiap, Corella Torrente in the top three, Al Rubayan trying to fend off Anderson with Celio in sixth, about 11 seconds off the pace. Then there's three talented young Scandinavians, Stark, Force and Roms. Just behind them in 10th is Cedric Deguin, a good return performance after a 10-year absence. Stromoy back in 12th, and Al Hamily struggling way back there in 17th. In fourth position, Anderson makes a move on Al Rubayan, coming along the outside of the Kuwaiti as they approach boy number two. The Swede has it! He smokes Al Rubayan, who continues his slide down the field as Anderson sets his sights now on the top three. Anderson's teammate Jesper Force continues his excellent racing form by pressing on Celio from the inside. Force overtakes the two-time world champ coming into the right-hander. Great racing by Jesper Force. Drama in the lead. Alex Carella is caught up with Schiap trying to pass the Frenchman as they go Sponson to Sponson. These two giants have won the last four world titles between them. Shiap just holding off the Italian as they come around the right-hander. Shiap opening his lead over Corella as they begin passing the back markers. But Corella is still looking for any chance of a slip-up. Seemingly quite comfortable in his new DAC boats. Behind Corella, Torrente is having trouble handling his new Baba boat through the rough waters. But he's still in third place. Impressive, considering his boat was taken out of storage and prepared in a hurry. Ten laps down, and the defending world champion looks to be in complete command of this race as he laps back markers going into lap 11. Shiap's teammate Zhang Ziwei, in his fourth year in F1 H2O, is in 14th position. Another youngster, Jesper Fors, is pushing up on Yusuf Al Rubayan, who's just behind Force's teammate, Jonas Anderson, and there's only split seconds separating the three. In that whole melee, Sammy Celio finds the speed he needs on the outside to get the jump on Force, bumping the young Swede down a spot. There's a battle royale for fourth position between Al Rubayan, Anderson, Force, and Celio. Al Rubayan keeps up the pursuit of Anderson as he tries to find a gap through all that spray to reclaim fourth spot. But under all that pressure, Anderson nearly spins out on the turn. And that's all Al Rubayan needs to overhaul the Swede and begin to claw his way back up the field. Anderson now chasing the Kuwaiti with Celio right there behind them. While Al Hamili's race ends as he motors back to the wet pit, the battle continues between Al Rubayan and Anderson. But Celio maintains his speed through the left-handers and sneaks up on the inside to pass both Al Rubayan and Anderson, moving into fourth. The 2007 and 2010 World Championship winner Celio had a lackluster 2014, and he's looking to get back to <laughs> to 
his glory days in 2015. On turn number five, Sammy Celio pops a boy! That could be penalized. Shiop, meanwhile, maintains a comfortable three-second lead over Corella, the two drivers breaking away from the rest of the field. Further back, Philip Roms picks up the pace on that straight to challenge Christophe Larigo of Team EMIC. The young Finn passing the Frenchman on lap 15. The battle at the back continues between two veterans, Francesco Cantando and Duarte Benavente, the Portuguese driver chasing the Italian. Disaster for Schiap! The Frenchman has come to a sudden stop on lap 16. CTIC China's Philip Dessertin is irate. The crowd is in a sullen mood. But the race continues. Jesper Force moves into fifth, passing his teammate Anderson. But the youngster nearly barrel rolls on that choppy turn, relinquishing that hard-earned fifth and dropping back down the field as he gets going again. That's been a treacherous corner all weekend, and Stark also nearly loses it there. In charge of this race now is Alex Corella. Far off behind him is his former teammate Sean Torrente in second, and Celio in third, Arubayan in fourth, Anderson in fifth. And Eric Stark up in sixth now for Emirates team. On the young Swede's tail on the inside is Cantando. Cantando is a 12-time Grand Prix champ and a daunting prospect for any driver to find in their rearview mirror. But Stark maintains his consistent form throughout the race to keep a safe distance with the Motoglass F1 ace. But Cantando pushes on the throttle, trying to gain on Stark, cutting the distance down as they come around that right-hander. Cantando is almost neck and neck with Stark as they race to boy number five. There's contact! Contando is virtually on top of Stark! The two crash out right on that turn! Nobody's hurt, but the race is over for both of them. Yet another blow to the accident-prone Emirates team. That's a yellow flag on lap 26. Here it is again. There's barely anything between them, and then Contando's left sponson hooks into Stark's engine, and that takes both boats out of the race. Philip Roms with just enough time to avoid joining that mess. I had some engine problems just be before and uh, I don't know what happened. Katando just hit me in the back. I, everything was fine but the engine died and then didn't start again. So maybe something is wrong with the engine. So I don't know. Katando's number 24 boat is also towed back into shore. Katando is fine despite losing the chance to get some points on the board here. The boats slowly line up for the restart. Problems under the yellow flag for Sean Torrente. He was on target for a runner-up finish, but a clogged engine fuel filter bumps him down to fourth. The laps wind down as they're unable to restart. The final stretch. Alex Carella first to cross the finish line for Team Abu Dhabi. Sammy Celio finishes runner-up with Yusuf al Rubai on third. However, there was a dramatic shakeup in the final race results following the podium, as Corella was disqualified for a setup infraction, and Celio was penalized a lap for taking out the boy, which handed the race win to Yusuf Al Rubayan. Jonas Anderson was runner-up, and Philip Roms gets his first podium finish. Actually, we, we work hard to be in the podium. Since I start 2011, this is the official podium for me. I'm very happy for uh, my team, who did a lot of job to make me uh, in a good shape. Uh, I would say we are there. You will get more, inshallah, in the future. I uh, had a problem in the shootout. First of all, I put the wrong propeller, but second of all, something was wrong with the AFI box and I didn't find the problem until uh, after the free practice. I didn't test any kind of box, so I was really, really happy to finish uh, four. And now, suddenly I'm second, so I'm really happy to, to bring a new boat and finish second place. And uh, yeah, everything is great. Uh, we started at the uh, ninth position. <laughs> Oh. 
Uh, it's my first time in Formula 1 at the podium, so I'm really happy. A fourth place for Torrente is enough to keep him atop the world overall standings. And Arubayan shoots up to second position on equal points with Jonas Anderson, with Shiap in fourth and young Philip Roms in fifth. In the team standings, Team Sweden is on top ahead of F1 GC Atlantic Racing Team with Matt Croc Baba racing in third. The UIM F1 H2O flag moves. <laughs>